Before we start with turn three, a correction needs to be made. In the second Soviet turn, there was an attack by four stacks of Soviet units on three German units, which were isolated. I should have applied a plus one die roll modifier. Instead, this three to one attack received a minus one die roll modifier, and the shown result was an attacker retreat, which disrupted all the attackers. The correct result should have been a defender retreat, which would have destroyed all three German defending units, which had to retreat through enemy zones of control. Because the correct result would have been elimination for the German units, we will make the adjustment right now. The 4-5 Panzer Grenadier Division is eliminated, as well as the two 4-5 Infantry Divisions that were underneath it. Here we see next to the Revolution Games logo the units that have been eliminated so far in the game. Now we add the three eliminated units to the German side, and in this game, each side receives one victory point per five enemy units eliminated. So on account of the unit elimination, the Russians have one victory point. Finally, we'll make some adjustments here because if we would have eliminated the correct number of units, we would not left that Panzer unit on its own. And uh, we would distribute uh, forces in the line in a more even fashion. So now we're ready to start turn number three and I want to thank my YouTube subscriber uh, Jack O'Lantern for pointing out uh, this mistake and it's been duly corrected. On to turn three. So we proceed now to turn number three. Soviet activation point phase. The Soviets receive seven activation points. These are added to the three activation points left in the unused box. And the Soviets have a total of 10 activation points for this turn. Now we proceed to the Soviet movement phase. You saw that uh, in German turn number two, they uh, retreated in this sector of the line uh, in order to form a line, actually. So the Soviets will be advancing a substantial number of their forces, uh, composed of the WR front, including the first shock army, to fall upon these German units, which uh, I don't think have the numbers to hold for long. Uh, further to the south, around Mohais Mohaisk, we see that that town has been uh, captured by the Soviets. The Germans uh, have not organized their forces well there, so we will see more attacks in that vicinity. The Fourth Army seems to be holding its ground here except for the situation to the southwest of Sukinichi, where there is still a gap, but there is considerable forest terrain here that will slow down the attackers. To the north here, the Kalinin Front is being held by the 9th Army, which has stood its ground. It's the only German army that has its original position since the beginning of the game. And in the north, the uh, Northern Front will be able to cross the river and attack uh, German units there, but uh, not in sufficient strength to cause any havoc in this turn. So the Soviets spend their first activation point to activate the units of the WL Front for movement. These are the forces of the WL Front before movement. And here we see the units of the WL Front after movement. They have been advancing through Sukinichi, and now the Soviets control that victory point city, meaning that the Germans will not score that victory point, that sole victory point for control of that city. And uh, the Russians have pushed to open up the front, and uh, we have our Russian units in contact with this panzer division here in the south, and there will be an attack against this surrounded panzer division. Uh, in the combat phase and uh, there's only a minus one because of forest terrain. So after observing the movements of the WL front we see that uh, they have advanced and uh, the northernmost units are stretched thin to keep a front here in contact with the units of the WR front which are the next to make their move. 
Soviets spend a second activation point. To activate the WR front for movement. The WR front has some free terrain which to move in that the Germans have uh, given up to form somewhat of a line around the woods to the east of Sishevka. So these are the positions before movement. These are the positions after movement. You see that uh, units of the WR front have advanced and come into contact with German units. It appears that the most important attack will be against these panzer divisions here. Well, one panzer division and an infantry division, which are blocking the way to Zef, a three victory point uh, city. And we have the first shock army. We have this, uh, it's really a cavalry unit, which is misprinted but it's a breakthrough unit. It can advance two hexes in certain circumstances, and this four or five unit will be attacking. So there's a good chance that we may see this cavalry unit advance to the outskirts of Rezev. Next, we'll see the movement of the Kalinin front units. The Russians spend their third activation point to activate the Kalinin front for movement. And these infantry units will move here to take a position to surround the two German infantry divisions of the 9th Army. This uh, infantry unit will move to this hex here. And this infantry unit will move here. Finally, this infantry unit would, will spend its six movement points to move into this hex. So the Kalinin front in the combat phase will try to push back those German units that are behind the river. The Soviets spend a fourth activation to move the units of the northern front. Here are the positions before movement, and these are the positions after movement. Probably see two attacks in this area. And that concludes the movement phase of the Soviet forces in this third turn. Now we proceed to the combat phase. Soviets spend a fifth activation point to activate the WL front for attack. And here we see various possible attacks. The most obvious is the one against the surrounded 3rd Panzer Division. And uh, there may be attacks against these two infantry units. So this is a three to one attack with a minus one because the defenders are in woods. The result is a three modified to a two defender retreats, one hex, and that panzer division is eliminated because it is surrounded by units and enemy zones of control. The vacated hex is occupied by the Soviets. Now we move on to the situation where there are three Soviet units in contact with two German units. And these two Russian units will attack this German unit in clear terrain. A 3 to 1 attack with no modification. The die roll is a 1, contact, so all units stay where they are. And there are going to be, there are going to be no more attacks with the units of the WL front in this turn. The Soviets spend a 6th activation point to activate the WR front for attack. And the WR front has various attack options, starting with the uh, German units to the southwest of Mosaisk. Here we see two powerful Soviet units attacking a Panzer Grenadier Division 15 to 3 or 5 to 1 with a river in between with a minus 1. So we roll 1d6. And it's the worst result possible, a 1 modified to a 0 exchange, meaning that the German unit is eliminated, but so is one of the strong Soviet units this case, the 7-4. Next, the armored 5-7 unit and the mechanized infantry 5-6 attack the 14th German Panzer Grenadier Division in Forest Hex. So that's a 3-1 to one with a minus 1. And another one is rolled, modified to a 0 attacker retreat. So both attacking units retreat and are flipped to their disrupted sides. So now we move to a more promising attack. The first shock army and two more units attacking Panzer Division and an infantry division. 
This is a 4 to 1 attack with no modification. The result is a slightly better 2. Defender retreats 1. Defending units are retreated 1 hex to the southwest and flip to their disrupted sides. The 1st Shock Army and the 4-8 uh, Cavalry Unit, which is mislabeled as an infantry unit, and the vacated hex will be occupied by the Cavalry Unit, which is mislabeled as an infantry unit. It is a breakthrough unit. It cannot advance any further because it is in the zone of control of another enemy unit, namely, for instance, the 23rd Infantry Division. Now we see here that further to the south there's some attack possibilities by the Soviets, but an attack by these two stacks here would be uh, a two to one attack with a minus one die roll modifier, and uh, the prospects of advancing are not very good, so there will be no further attacks by the WR front. The Soviets now spend their eighth activation point to activate the Kalinin front for attack. Now, taking a look at the positions of the Kalinin front, they don't have uh, odds, good odds, on most of the German units. The most they can make up is a 16 to 5, 3 to 1 against the German 206th Infantry Division, and it's a 3 to 1 attack with a minus 2, minus 1 for the river, and minus 1 for the woods. The result is a 4 modified to a 2, defender retreats 1 hex. Germans are retreated to the southwest and are flipped to their disrupted side. Soviets occupy the vacated hex. The Soviets spend their eighth activation point to activate the northern front for attack. Only one attack in this sector against the German 32nd Infantry Division. Four to one attack with a minus one because the defending unit is in woods. Three modified to a two, the defender retreats one hex. The German unit is retreated and disrupted. And the victorious units advance into the vacated hex. And with the conclusion of that combat situation, that's the end of the Soviet combat phase. Next is the first shock army withdrawal phase. We're in turn three. Uh, penalty for withdrawing this unit starts to uh, uh, come into play in turn five, so uh, we will not withdraw the first shock army. There's no airborne or partisan phase in this turn, so play proceeds to the recovery phase. The only disrupted Soviet units are those at Mosaisk. They're flipped to their non-disrupted side. And that concludes Soviet turn number three. As we see here, the Soviets have uh, advanced to the west of Sukhinichi. The Germans have formed the line. There's still a gap in the uh, wooded area to the southwest of Sukhinichi, but not enough Soviet forces to exploit that gap there. The German 4th Army has held its positions reasonably well. In the area of the 4th Panzer Army, the Soviets have managed to destroy various divisions, and uh, the Germans need to place a stop to this front, which is advancing in force. And that includes, of course, the dreaded First Shock Army. But the First Shock Army uh, has two more turns of damage to inflict on the Germans before deciding whether to withdraw or not. Here we see the sector with the Kalining Front. It's been fairly static since the beginning of the game. And finally, the Northern Front. The Russians have made some progress, but after crossing the river, the Germans have managed to form a line and put a stop to the Russian advance. So this concludes this video. Stay tuned for the next video, where we will show the third German turn. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.